Islam, y'all. This me Allah. Rahim. I know how we had to start it <clears throat> from the beginning. And I'm gonna send out some invites <clears throat> while I play kinda our our opening song, our official well not song, but the official opening audio of the cheat code media. Blah blah blah. Whatever it is that I said I am. I'm not. But this is how I start everything, and I'm gonna send out these invites in the meanwhile. Listen up. This is really important Listen for up. our culture to understand where Christianity came from. And this is direct it's evidence. Connected. You can actually walk this path and come to this conclusion. You can know that Christianity was an invention of the Romans. It was done to pacify their subjects. Right. And this is important because it gives us a different way of understanding government, how government operates, the tools that government uses, the purpose that government has for the various propaganda apparatus. I think it's it's just it's 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 a requirement of alert citizens to know how the gospels were written, why they were written, who produced them, what was the purpose and back of all this. This is good citizenry. Everyone should be involved in this. Everyone should be looking at this, reading it, and coming and, and recognizing that this was where the Gospels originated. The Gospels came from the Flavian Imperial Court. Okay, so why is that important? Second Southern Colony, Maryland, received Let me stop a royal that. I may play that as well. Why is that so important? Well, that's so important because um, the world wasn't Christian. You know what I mean? Everybody in the world uh, was not a Christian. Christianity or the government that we live under right now is a um, government that's really based on wars that was fought. Like, wherever in the world. And they weren't wars fought on race. They was fought about land primarily. To be landlords and rent and own land. So, where was I going at? Calvin and Maryland next. So you got to understand um, the laws or <clears throat> the guidelines of the bylines or whatever Christianity is, isn't something that people practice openly and freely. What happened with that is they, they basically forced it on people. And um, give me a second. I got to pull up another one of my mainstays in audio, which is um, the doctrine of discovery. The documents of discovery and that'll tell you more about what i'm talking about to get to the straw man you have to know how we got to this place so you have to start at the beginning and if y'all could think of our creator allah got a job whatever whatever name you have for the the one deity because Honestly, y'all, I never heard the name, so I'm not going to make like I can say it's Allah. I, I choose to use Allah, not that I've heard Allah whisper it to me, and that's that's honest for me. So as long as we come to understanding that it's this one God, not the God, the Son of God, it's the, the one, the Creator God, the everything. Christianity took that ability from people, and um, it was under this doctrine, let me see. I could pull this up. Domination. The language of the papal bulls. The theme of domination. Okay, that's one, but that's not the one that I wanted. Doctrine of Discovery. That's not it. Oh, where's the Doctrine of Discovery yet for me? It's one of my favorite pieces of proof. Here we go. Let me search. Give me a second, folks. Hopefully, I can find it and pull it up because uh, most of y'all that follow me on the regular, <coughs> shout out to y'all, all of you that um, I, I really do appreciate the people that take time to come in and listen to the information, right? And um, this video today is a result of somebody that followed me way back when on Periscope when I, I wasn't where I am right now, and um. I'm still growing, and I appreciate everybody that, that's still around, that's growing as well, because I was in a whole different place. Um, a lot of information, but still get towards religion instead of the truth. And that's the difference with this, right? That's why you have to start before what you think was always established. And 
Christianity is not an establishment. It's a term of war. Um, that's how everything in the Western world came to be. Christianity saying, hey, look, we're going to take your shit because we can. And, and that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it, y'all. I'm trying to find it. That's the colonization of Maryland. And this is one of my main pieces of uh, information. I have it on my phone, but it's ruined now. Like the something's done. I was trying to transfer the files over, but as soon as you turn the phone on, you know, with a crack screen, everything just go. Excess is possessed. All everything start playing, and I thought I could sneak it out, but I couldn't. But on that is where I had my my sound bites, um, the doctrine of discovery, and this shit. I don't know why it's not here. I do not know why because doctrine of discovery domination. I could play that one out. It's three minutes. It'll basically say the same thing. Here we go. Game of domination is found in various Vatican documents from the 15th century. Light it up. For example, in the papal bull of May 4th of 1493, Pope Alexander the Sixth says that it is pleasing to the divine majesty that barbarous nations be subjugated. The Latin word is depremantur. Barbarous. That word, what that word meant to what people said means today. Back then when they was talking about barbarous, they was talking about Berbers, uh, things that were associated with any things that weren't Greek. So the Saracens, the Berbers, barbarians, all these people were Islamic. And you can check the writing for yourself. Look up the word Saracen. Um, back then, you couldn't have a, a successful nation being governed under heathen rules, heathen laws, because it was just too free flowing. Like anything went in those nations. So it could be no heathen nation, it could be no pagan nation that would establish themselves. So the two major nations would have been the Israelites. So they had one unified law. And Islam, which was the same God, but who knows where it happened at. My take on it is God said do eight. Eight was the was the number that God said. Um, this group said four plus four, the other group said six plus two. And they've been at war for how to get to eight the whole time, all these years. But they form rituals behind their method of getting to eight instead of practicing eight. That's Jesus. That's Muhammad. You got to get to eight this way. And, and this is what religion became. And man put guidelines on that. And that's what most of y'all are victim of to now. Y'all just ignore the eight. And the documentation says it's, it's eight and only eight. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying it's me and only me, the, the one, the uno. That that created God, right? That's the thing that you got taken away from you, right here. Which means to reduce, to cast Again, down. Again, let me start from the beginning. Domination, the language of the papal bulls. The theme of domination is found in various Vatican documents from the 15th century. For example, in the papal bull of May 4th of 1493, Pope Alexander the Sixth says that it is pleasing to the divine majesty that barbarous nations be subjugated. The Latin word is depremantur, which means to reduce, to cast down or press down, to hold down. And it also states that it is pleasing to the divine majesty for the Christian empire to be propagated. Pope Alexander the Sixth stated, we trust in him from whom empires and dominations and all good things proceed. The Holy See of the Catholic Church issued many such documents even before 1493. For example, in 1452, Pope Nicholas V issued a directive to King Alfonso of Portugal to go to the western coast of Africa and to invade, capture, vanquish, and subdue all Saracens, pagans, and other enemies of Christ. Saracen, look it up. Pagans, pagan nations couldn't sustain themselves. They might have had a little patch of land, but Saracen are Islamic people. This is what the early Christian writers referred to for Islamic folks well before Muhammad even came into existence. So when I say I'm not a Muslim, it's because I don't bear witness to Muhammad just honestly and truthfully. I'm not going to go along with it because 
when my days are up, if whatever kind of thing it is, I'm going to answer to a law for it. I'm not going to be shamed in or grouped into saying I bear witness to something that I didn't bear witness to. So I couldn't take a shahada and, and be honest. So I, I can't bear witness that Muhammad is any prophet. I, I can read. You know, I, I do read so I can see and I've got to these laws myself and I managed to practice these laws without the help of Muhammad or Jesus, which in fact are these straw men that that you're going to learn. So let me finish this off. And um, again, Saracen pagans, they, they just decreed that, hey, look, we better than y'all and we're going to take y'all shit. And I'm going to stay on this for a little while because you have to digest this to understand how to regurgitate it. So let's go. And to invade, capture, vanquish, and subdue all Saracens, pagans, and other enemies of Christ to reduce their persons to perpetual slavery and to take away all their possessions and property. That directive was reissued in 1455, 1456, 1481, 1493, 1506, and 1514. I'm going to stop it right here for a second and explain something else. What's up, Ann? I just saw your message. It's my bro, my bro, my young bro in here getting it. Good dad, good dude, all around brother. Appreciate you, fam. Thanks for your time. So um, I'm going to go back a little bit, right? Because they said something in there as well as the domination that most people don't get. Now, when you have time to sit down, you should check out the documents of discovery. I actually give you all links to go to so you can do the math yourself. You know, don't let anybody tell you that they're the ones with the equation. This, you could be the one, but you bow down to tradition. You bow down to fear. You bow down to shame. And you could be the one, you know, say what you need to say. And it'll be people out there that listen. Like, sure enough, y'all come here and listen to me. And I appreciate y'all for that. And I don't think people really take it how I mean it because the world is so phony, right? Well, I'm a man that had five to six months to live, right? <laughs> That's it. That's everything for me. So I appreciate people that take time out of their life because you don't know how much time you have. And for y'all to give me some of that time, I appreciate it. And for the people that they got the same chance to live and, and, and enjoy life every day and you don't like what I'm saying, you come here to be mad. It's like, what, what else? I don't even need to say anything to you. Like you, you just let me take a chunk out of your day and I don't even know you. And when men can understand that shit, you'll, you'll see the femininity and who's who. And it don't matter that you think you're a killer, but just to be mastered like that, as big as the fucking world is, you don't know if it's going to be your last day, my last day, and you choosing to wage a war against information. You can just brush the fuck off. So I enjoy all the brothers that come here for what I'm saying. For you niggas that come here and don't like it, bro, I don't know what to say about y'all. That's... That's a bit womanish. Like, just looking at, look at this bitch. I hate her. She had blah, 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 blah. You, you know, bitch shit. And most of y'all was raised by your mom. So I know right where the problem lie at. But look, another one of those lies that they tell her that you are from Africa. The documents of discovery prove it's otherwise because these nations, these European nations were extremely greedy. And they would cross cut throat each other just like that. They were governed by Christianity, which was governed by the Pope. Whatever the Pope said is what went down. So the Pope wrote these documents of discovery saying, look, if these motherfuckers are not Christian, take their shit. That's it. Because I said so. That's as simple as I can make it, y'all. It's not chess. I'm telling you, it's checkers. That's what you under right now, what you believe you under. Let me rewind a little bit. And the support that you're not from Africa... The Pope split the world in the Western Hemisphere and the Eastern Hemisphere. The Portuguese, they got Africa. So that the Spanish and the Portuguese didn't fight each other about this land. Columbus got the Western Hemisphere, which is where we are, which is why South, South America speaks Spanish. It's nobody here from Africa. It sounds good. And the same people that told you that Donald Trump was a racist, Hitler was this, uh, they giving you cash back for college, all this shit catering to you. No, that's their agenda. They told you you was from Africa. Why, why would you be from Africa? What would be the benefit? How do you cash that in? Pity. Oh, look at the poor dummies. They don't know anything. I, I can't tell my kids this shit. It's, it's, 
It's shameful. You know what I'm saying? It's honestly shameful that we as people got to go to somebody else to speak for you. I don't need a lawyer. What do I look like? Another man is in charge of my freedom. I know everything it is that I need to know about being free. And I speak it in a simple language. They can't catch me up in their, their terms. That's Christianity. You don't have to speak that. My identification card is not based on what this state says. I don't exist because they created a state. I'm antecedent to the state. I being man, we created the state. The state didn't create us. So you don't answer to something that you the creator of. It's like you don't become my Frankenstein. I'm still self lord and master. If I make a creator, all the if I make excuse me, I'm sorry. If I make a computer, then all of y'all made a computer. Me being man, all of y'all are man. So my invention can't control mankind. It's that simple, and that's guaranteed by our creator, and you live in one nation under God. Now, because y'all don't approach that part, what can you do? If you're approaching Jesus, if you're approaching Muhammad, then you're going to get in line, and it's going to be a man over top of that, so you're subdued. I'm Islamic. I have no masters. It's my job to bump and bruise. It's my job to get better. It's not anybody else's job for me to... Nobody's going to pay my rent. And if any man is going to have say so over me, you're going to pay for the place that I lay my head. Other than that, you not going to tell me what the fuck to do. And that's to death because I'm the one that's going to face that death. When men realize that it's a different story. You see these kids, these youth out here, they get it, but they just misguided that energy that they have that will overthrow the government. But what's good but they're out here taking over, smashing and grabbing, jumping on police cars. That's the energy you need to change, but they don't have anybody leading them. And I don't mean just for the violent part of it, but that they would go that far so the government would back the fuck down. They don't even put the names of these kids up that actually murder people. Oh, because of juvenile laws. You know how much these kids could get away with, but for good? For good. Not not for bad. Like, imagine if they knew they don't need driver's license. That's just something that you believe. Look at my videos. I've done it. And I went to jail, right? The jail is supposed to be the deterrent. So you're like, well, this nigga went to jail. I'm in the war. That's a casualty of war. But what did I go to jail for? Did I come out of there with what I went to get? Yes, I did. No driver's license for me. And I was found innocent on a driver's license. The whole car situation. This sneaky ass dishonorable judge, and this is me learning on the job. He he sent me to jail for not listening to a lawful order. And there was no law being broken, so I didn't detest on that because I was new to it. But I had blood in the game. See, I went to jail for, for not my opinion, for what I walked on. As most people talking shit about what I'm saying, they ain't going to walk on it. The cancer not there. See, my, my conviction is different. When I'm working out, I'm doing it because I want to live. I'm doing it to regenerate tissues, to get blood pumping, to regenerate what I lost. That's why I go that hard. It ain't competitive to another man, but they're going to see me like this nigga. No, you don't know me, bro. I'm trying to live. Don't make my white T-shirt your white T-shirt. You a corner boy in your shit. I am not. It's just the same white T, right? So I'm, I'm the entity that's in the T-shirt. I'm Evan. That's what I tell people. I'm Evan. No more, no less. I'm not a Hebrew. I'm not. What I am is an American, an Islamic American. And I'm not black. And I'm about to be a smart ass too and start identifying as a middle-aged redneck white man. I mean, if this nigga can identify as a woman, you see his fucking beard, penis lump in his pants. That's a woman because that's his preferred pronoun. Ha, <laughs> look at my brother, Tiger Ant, in, the, in that check. With a big capitalized Islam. That's right, bro. And it's our job to master ourselves throughout our life. We becoming and Bro, when I see younger brothers like you, I feel good. And then sometimes I'm ashamed, right? Because <laughs> like at that age, you, you picking up something that it took cancer. 49 years, man. My head up my ass, bro. That's why the fire under me right now. I, I know I owe. You know what I'm saying? And, I don't take my days for granted. So when I'm well, when I'm, when I'm up, I'm on here spitting it out because it's not mine. And mind you, 
I'm not teaching anybody anything. I'm putting information out. Just like I learn from different places what I'm playing. This guy didn't put this out with me in mind personally, but I'm using it. I'll be explaining to people and they should be shocked that they not used to hearing knowledge at all. Straight brainwash, bro. Yeah, it's it's a struggle. It's a struggle, Ant man. And the people that's closest to you. That's that's why we connected. That's why all my brothers on here, shout out to Steve, shout out to Paulie, shout out to uh, my brother E, Dana. It's these brothers, man. Am I missing anybody? If I'm missing any brothers, my bad. But I appreciate y'all, man. And the sisters, too, the sisters that do come. Because they come to here. And I appreciate that. They go out and do their own research. You know, um, I, I start turning my comments off on YouTube. Because it's a distraction to, to explain to people that ain't there to, to understand. You know what I'm saying? And that's part of the growth, too. That's their war. My war is something different. It's a lot to do to fight this government and check shit, but they going to check me on checking their old ass nigga traditions and bullshit that they was told. Like, I'm saying they not from Africa and I can prove they not from Africa. And, and I just stopped. So I said, fuck the whole masses. And that was personal. Y'all follow me here and my, my account is private even more so. So when I say my community is an Islamic community. I'm not a part of an Instagram community. I'm not a part of a YouTube community. I'm a part of this community, this channel that I put up that people came in because they listening to what I'm saying. If I'm not here, then Ant not here in this, this particular moment, right? He's he's in here listening to what I have to say because this is preferred information source. And it don't have to be six fucking million, six fucking million viewers. And now you're saying Ant don't count because he ain't in the masses. So the masses suck dick. And since Ant don't suck dick, he don't get considered. That's fucking discrimination. And I'm not a part of any goddamn community. Y'all don't own me because I, I operate on a platform that you created. If you made a fucking wooden box or a stage that said Instagram on it, and I stood on that stage and yelled at the top of my lungs, fuck gay people, fuck gay people, Instagram didn't say shit. They know who's saying it. And if y'all succumb to pressure talking about, oh, why you let him stand on y'all box and say that, tell them who will suck y'all dick. It ain't enough for them to tear nothing down. Or they will have their own NBA, own NFL. It ain't nothing that's primarily trans or gay. So fuck y'all. You don't count as much as you think you do. That shit is a brainwash. Yup. I'm Islamic. We don't fuck with gays. And you're not going to press me into it because I ain't pressing those dick suckers, those booty hole eating ass fuckers to be Islamic. I ain't running around saying, repent, motherfucker, y'all going to burn in hell. None of that. So don't bring that pride shit to me because it ain't nothing to be proud of eating assholes out, laying down with men like you laying down with women. And then Instagram, you support that shit by saying it's hate speech. Bitch, I follow the word of God. How is that hate speech? How was procreation hate speech? Y'all are motherfucking haters. The haters of life. Fuck out of here in this reversed ass world. And y'all gonna pay. I think they can be safe and sound tucked away behind keyboards and shit. Y'all living a regular day to day life. Teenagers run up on everybody in the hand of God. The God motherfuckers where it need to go. Psalm 78 and 49. The narrative of that is like I will... He will send evil angels amongst you in his anger, wrath, indignation, and trouble. He'll send evil angels among you. And the angel is just me or whoever. Whatever that need to be done, we're going to do it. Whether we're in a fucked up mood that day and I'm feeling fucked up, the most high going to make sure I cross your path that day and fuck you up. Now, I might go to jail and all that because I already threw in the towel. I don't give a shit. So when me not giving a shit... The creator still going to get his will done. Well, this nigga going to jail anyway, but that bitch has something coming. I'm going to send him. That's the hand of the creator. These motherfuckers don't even know it. Aunt. They think it's by chance. It was a mistake. Not my son. Oh, my son was in, in this and that, but you wasn't, bitch. You a single mom. Your son already at risk. The creator said be in a union and you think that you good? You out of your fucking mind. Now you got to make sure you clear that shit up with the creed. I'm not saying that it's an impossible thing, but you need to acknowledge that part 
whoa, that shit was wrong. And then you go forward from there. Don't be proud of that shit. You proud to be a foreigner fucking kid. That wasn't a union, right? And I'm talking not just one person in the totality. And somebody that did it, they're going to take it personal. And, oh, this nigga don't. Shut up, nigga. Shut the fuck up. You know what I'm saying is the truth. Those kids don't stand a goddamn chance. Y'all dumbasses fighting. Y'all fucked and that was it. She ain't got no certificate guaranteeing anything. And it happened to everybody. But own it. Then you can change it. You keep on making excuses for that shit because you ashamed. Oh, I was young. No dummy. No dummy. No dummy. No dummy. Nine months is a long time. You had decided that I'm going to take these nine months. Your financial situation, did you take that into account? Where you lived at? Did you take that into account? And then your son gets shot and killed trying to do the right thing. You've been out of order his whole fucking existence. And then when that shit hits you, oh, how this happened? My son was going to be different. He couldn't. He couldn't be different. You you was the reason. Every Christmas you celebrated all his birthdays, that's against our creator. I'm not saying that shit because I'm a stick in the mud. My birthday, December motherfucking 24th. You know how many years I got busy with it? Nigga, turn up. Me and Jesus, homeboys, we Capricorns. All that shit I'm saying. That shit stopped. I got cancer. I'm like, whoa. Playtime is over. I don't believe shit. And then I'm thinking about this relationship with Jesus. He out here eating his body, drinking his blood and shit. Ew. Swearing your allegiance to him. And then swearing your allegiance to Muhammad. You bear witness to Muhammad. You got to believe on Jesus' name. What happened to the pure relationship with the creator? Where'd that come at? Where'd that get fucked up at? Oh, Christianity. Let me get back to that. And to invade, capture, vanquish, and subdue all Saracens, pagans, and other enemies of Christ to reduce their persons to perpetual slavery and to take away all their possessions and property. That directive was reissued in 1455, 1456, 1481, 1493, 1506, and 1514. Just because they wanted to. So why was the document called a bull? It had to do with the fact that the document was sealed with wax, and that wax was imprinted with the papal ring and the insignia of the Holy See. From that wax was hung a red silken thread, and at the end of the red thread was a lead ball. As a seal. And the Latin word for ball is bulla. What these documents demonstrate, though, in terms of the language that was used, is the pattern or the paradigm of domination and dehumanization. Mm -hmm. And this is very clear by looking closely at the kind of language that was used in those documents. They go back to a root word, domo, in Latin, which is a very unusual Latinos. and obscure word. And it has seven main meanings. To subjugate, to subdue, to force into subservience, to tame, to domesticate, to cultivate, and to till. That's the schooling. To cultivate in Latin is colere, which means to colonize or design. When you take the root of colonize, you have colon, which is the digestive tract of the body politic that is coming in invasively into the lands and territories of indigenous nations and peoples. And that colonizing digestive <coughs> activity makes that predator body politic a devouring, consuming body that's coming in <coughs> invasively on top of the original nations and peoples. So, knowing this, now you got to be from Africa because you won't know to claim it after times of war. So blacks talking about reparations, right? Not not being from Africa, you don't get reparations. And then they inserted Native Americans. That's a part of the shit is the same as you being black and people being Jews. All of that's bullshit. There's no nation called Jews. There's no nation called blacks. And there's no nation called Native Americans. They have an agreement an agreement with the United Nations. Uh, Ethiopia, that's a nation. Nigeria is a nation. You understand what nations are? These other people, blacks, Jews, Native Americans, these are straw men. Legal fictions. They don't exist. 
and they go extra like on their on their job applications these are contracts and when they give you the contract it's like you only get these these choices you got to be this that or the third none of us thought that we could scratch it out and put in who we say we are by us being our own self lord and master subtly you agree to the terms of christianity because you don't know that you have alternatives you don't know that you're a free person and they can't keep you out of a society that they invaded, conquered, and subdued. And once you found out the truth about who and what you practice, you just repatriate back to it. Now, I hope I can show this clip as well. <laughs> it's recent and it's in Michigan. Michigan is one of the few places in the United States of America that has a primarily Muslim um, government, the city body. So... Recently, they uh, banned Pride Day or something like that, as they should. Alhamdulillah. Islam is, we're not, not any way, shape, form, or fashion friendly towards homosexuality. That's a no-no. That's Christian in this, in this concept. Paganism, that's, that's that part of town. That's from the Western world. That's sleeping with your sisters, your family members, and all of that. Strict rules in, in Torah. And Ishmael being the son of Abraham, the rules flow right through, you know what I mean? So, strict laws against that. And the Muslims carried it out. Shout out to them. And it's an interesting story, too. I think I'm going to play that for y'all. And then I'm going to go to the dismantling of the doctrine of discovery, right? And this is this is even more. Well, let me go to that first. Because it's right there. Then I'll go to the um, the Muslims stomping out stomping out flags or whatever they stomped out the lgbt flags and actually um anyway let me let me play this it's called dismantling of the doctrine of discovery y'all professor robert j miller arizona state university and this was 2013 so it's been around forever we just don't care to research i guess Yo entiendo, yo necesito habla lento, por estas personas aquí habla sola inglés. He said he got some dirty Spanish. He'd rather speak English. He won't speak much I have been asked to speak slowly in English so that the translation in Spanish uh, proceeds properly. But I don't see too many people listening to translation. Come on, Doc. Like I usually do really Get to the program, Chuck. That Spain was very legalistic in its application of the doctrine of discovery. Far more than any other of the colonial powers, England, France, even Portugal, uh, etc., in North America, and Central and South America, Spain applied law. North America, Central and South America, Spain. I will cover some of these issues. Portugal, uh, etc., in North America, and Central and South America, Spain applied That's law why you speak Spanish. that they drafted repeatedly, and I will cover some of these issues. But what I'm going to start out with is, of course, the international law of discovery. That the children of those people are not even indigenous, very, those are natives. Talk about the ten elements that I define or that I have perceived I'm indigenous. make up the doctrine of discovery. And then I will try to point out how Spain applied that in Central South America and this southwest part of what is now the United States. The United States Supreme Court decided in Johnson v. McIntosh that North America was settled by the English primarily under the doctrine of discovery and conquest. The, what did that mean for native peoples, for the indigenous peoples of North America? Well, the court said they immediately lost some of the rights to their land. Magically, without any consent, without any consultation, without any payment, or mm -hmm. even without knowledge of indigenous peoples, they lost the full ownership of their land Just like that. under Anglo-American or English and American property law. What else did the doctrine of discovery do to indigenous peoples? Well, they immediately lost, again, without their knowledge or their consent or any agreement with these Europeans that showed up, they immediately and magically lost some of their sovereign powers. The right, according to the United States Supreme Court, to engage in international diplomacy and international trade were the two primary examples the court talks about. So somehow, just because Europeans showed up with their flag and their cross and planted it in the soil, they were making a legal claim. And I want to remember legal. the doctrine of discovery is about law. 
In fact, the doctrine of discovery is probably the first form of international law that was developed. By one side. Gosh, what is international law? Well, it's the agreements that the international community develops how governments will interact with governments. That's, what, that's really a good definition even today of Government. international Nations. law. So how did these European countries decide among themselves to divide up the world? Boy, that's pretty nice. Steve, you and I ought to define how to divide someone's house out here. So if you and I can just agree on it, <laughs> then we can, you know, take your property. Y'all wow. understand? What a unique thing. Just like that. This case has been enormously important. It's been cited dozens and dozens and dozens of times by the courts in Canada, by the courts in Australia, by the courts in New Zealand. It's even been cited three times by what's called the English Privy Council, which is the highest Supreme Court in the United Kingdom in England. And always cited about colonization and the power of the uh, white, non-indigenous government to control the indigenous peoples. Cash. I'm not going to explain uh, that opinion anymore because we just don't have time. What I'm going to explain to you briefly are the 10 elements that I, after reading Johnson v. McIntosh 50 times, these are the justifications, the 10 elements that make up, I think, the doctrine, the international law doctrine of discovery. First, and this was primarily developed by the Catholic Church and by Spain and Portugal, in starting in the 1340s, primarily uh, being solidified in 1436, when Pope Eugenius II issued, I believe, the first papal bull about actual colonization and European power outside of Europe, granted the Canary Islands to Portugal to control and convert the wild men, that's quote unquote, the wild men of the Canary Islands. That's how you became the black man of America. The same way, X and them, people saw you and called you what you look like. They said that they were wild men because they didn't behave in a way that they thought that they should. Still happening today. The Canary Island peoples were denigrated by the Spanish and the Portuguese. You can read the identical definitions of what were said about American Indians and the indigenous peoples around the rest of the world by Spain and Portugal why these Canary Island people have no law, they have no agriculture, they have no clothes, they have no money, they don't speak our language, they don't have laws. Well, the vast majority of those things were lies, weren't they? But those were the same kind of justifications that have always been described about American Indians and indigenous peoples elsewhere to lower Literally, folks, that's one of the elements of racism, of the definition of racism, is to somehow set yourself apart Cassism. from the other, and then to lower in your valuation the way... Be, um, racism is a term that happened in America, and it's another one of those liberal white terms. It's always been about class and caste. Black meant you were just lower, had nothing to do with race. Conquering the world, pagan, Saracen had little to do with race. Outside of America, the term black was never used. You were Berber, uh, barbarous, Saracen, pagan, heathen, but you were never, ever black and white. They live or their law or their ethics, and that's exactly what the Spanish and the Portuguese were doing. Well, I'm gonna need more than 30 minutes. I'm still on element one, aren't I? Element two. And this, Spain and Portugal objected to this element. It's really England and Queen Elizabeth I in 1487 that developed this idea of, um, uh, excuse me, 1587, that developed this idea that a European country had to be an actual occupancy of these lands they had claimed, or England would then claim them. Spain and Portugal objected to that, and you'll see why. Uh, Spain and Portugal, here's the other uh, two elements I have. So what did Europeans claim when they showed up and stuck their flag and cross in the soil? I mean, they knew native peoples were living there and that had, they had a right to remain there. But the Europeans claimed the sole right to acquire those lands from those native peoples if there ever was any sort of transfer of possession. And so we call it preemption because that European country that showed up first that was the European country that claimed this right to acquire the lands from the native peoples. 
Native title, the United States Supreme Court uses the phrase Indian title a couple times. Courts of the states and the U.S. use this phrase hundreds of times. What did they mean by that? Well, what limited title ownership to the land did the indigenous groups retain? Mm. And, of course, we've already shown it's a limited title. Sovereign and commercial rights. We already mentioned that. Johnson v. McIntosh says the indigenous rights were limited somehow, and we'll talk about that. Under Christianity, just because. Contiguity. When a European rode ashore and stuck a flag and a cross here, how big of an area were they claiming? And I'll show you in a Mm -hmm. map in a moment, and I'll show you two maps. We'll talk about the element of contiguity. Terra nullius, that's Latin for the earth is empty. Primarily, this claim was made by the English in Australia. It was not used as much by Spain in this, the Southwest and then Central and South America, and it was not used too much by the United States and England in North America. But in Australia, the English claimed the continent was empty. Terra nullius, hence England claimed ownership of the whole continent of Australia. I ran out of room, so here's three elements on the last step. Conquest, I will talk about that. Just war. This is absolutely a Spanish development and a legal principle of the doctrine of discovery. And Spain and Spanish uh, theologians and lawyers and popes and kings were involved with developing this idea of conquest and the rights that indigenous peoples lost because of that. I don't even have to explain the last two, do we? Or do I? This has always been used as justification for Europeans to cross the ocean, claim the whole world because their religion was better than ours and because their civilization was better than ours. Uh, I think the United States continues to use arguments like that today. Can you remember a decade ago when we invaded Iraq? Do you remember a lot of the language that was used, that Christianity could be taken to the Middle East, and I don't think the United States used the word civilization, but we were going to take democracy to the Middle East. Those were literally those same two ideas, that the United States is superior and can take these ideas to the rest of the world. Now, I'm going to show you two maps. One, uh, and so I'm talking about contiguity now, aren't I? Mm Mm-hmm. I need to go back a little bit the in history. Area. After fighting over the Canary Islands in, in receiving that France papal bull in 1436, Portugal continued to explore down the west coast of Africa uh, and wanted the Pope to justify Portugal's claims in Africa. Africa. So in 1453 and 1455, Pope Nicholas V issues new papal bulls granting Portugal the rights to not to control Christianize and civilize these wild men of Africa. So, Portuguese and the Spanish were at war about these lands. So the Pope had to settle it. The Portuguese got Africa. Spain got over here. Spain wasn't going to Africa to bring anybody from... It would have been a war. That's their money. It definitely would have been a war. So... That's another lie that we just go along with. Hey, yeah, we came from Africa. Because it sounds good, but when you do the research, it's, it's not there. The line of contiguity. The line of demarcation. Something like that. Demarcation. They couldn't come past that line. The Pope had decreed that, so. In those documents. But also now to acquire sovereignty, jurisdiction, and title over these new lands. So Portugal was delighted with these paper bulls. Spain was cut out of this first era of exploration overseas. And so when Columbus shows up at the court of Isabella and Ferdinand and says, I think I can go west and I think I can find lands to the west, King King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella sent Columbus forth under seven documents that you can still read today. And I have the quote here, and I've totally lost all my notes now, <laughs> so I don't think I can find the quote. But they said he, they had sent him forth to seek and acquire new lands. And they promised him, and I can quote this, quote, we will make you the admiral over any lands you acquire for us. 
So what did we learn in school Columbus was doing? We all thought, well, we were all taught he was headed west to find good spices and cinnamon and pepper mm -hmm. and stuff, right? No. Well, he ultimately was hoping to get to China and the Japans, but he was primarily looking for new lands to the west to mm -hmm. claim for Spain. So the moment Columbus lands on, uh, what, Hispanola in the Caribbean and a couple other islands, Not he rushes back to Europe, Spain goes to the new pope, Pope Alexander VI, and says, okay, we found new lands that only have heathen, indigenous, wild men. Give us these lands like you have been doing for Portugal. So in 1493, Pope Alexander VI issues four papal bulls and he divides the world on this dotted line that you see on the map. This is a perfect example of the contiguity element of the doctrine of discovery. That dotted line, I think, was 500 leagues west of the, Ca the Azor Islands, and the Pope granted to Spain all lands west of that line to control, civilize, Christianize, and to acquire sovereignty, jurisdiction, and title. That's everything. And he oh, granted yeah. Portugal all those same rights west of that, so, and that line. So, you're not from Africa. If you know your world history pretty well, you know who did the first colonizing in Africa. You know who rounded Africa and did the first colonizing in India and Japan and some of the islands Portuguese. in the Pacific. And you know, gosh, what language do we speak in South America, Spanish. Central America, Mexico? Uh, Spanish. Simple, simple research. Wow. Well, Spain and Portugal argued about these papal bulls because they were concerned about the actual line. And so the very next year, in 1494, Spain and Portugal entered the Treaty of Tordesillas, and they moved that line 500 miles to the west. And so that's the bright red line that you see there, because Portugal wanted a bit of South America. Gosh, what language do they speak in Portugal, folks, or in Brazil? See, I gave that answer, wait a minute. So now a little bit of world history is made a little Portuguese clearer to me. Isn't busy too? It's the legal People history didn't know about them. of the world, and it's the legal history of the application of the doctrine of discovery, primarily by the church and Spain and Portugal. England and France became involved a little later, but the doctrine was pretty much solidified by the church, Spain, and Portugal. Once uh, Spain and Portugal started entering the You're Pacific, they Africa. had to decide where that line that Pope had drawn went through the Pacific. They got some shit. So in 1529, at the Treaty of Zaragoza, they drew the line, as you can see, through the Pacific. It literally split Australia in half, and that was well recognized for well over I'm going to stop that right now. Y'all get the idea. What... So all of this go into who you are today. Now, it's as simple as saying, hey, look. Y'all know about the whole history of this Christianity, where it came from. And I'm not that. And they allow men to identify as women. If y'all don't... It's an Old Testament, right? And it has nothing to do with Christianity. The Old Testament is outside of the stories. Now, hear me. Please try to hear me. If it's not one story written about any man that ever lived is it a way that you're supposed to behave written down anywhere close to east yes that's etched in stone never to change that is the word of god the word of equity the word of creation they wrapped it in religion and the man so they can control your pure relationship with it you don't owe me anything you owe it all to yourself and the creator gave an order for us to be healthy uh, it didn't give us an order to make any kind of money because in creation in the beginning, that wasn't a part of the equation. But you've been perverted into chasing that first instead of the morality. Now, you can make all the money in the world and it won't make you a good person. It won't change anything. And that sounds cliche until you see all these stars and these young boys shot dead in the street because the money was supposed to changed their whole life, the young drill rappers, but somehow they managed to get killed in them same streets that they they came out of. And it's just... Alhamdulillah. The creator word don't, don't come back void, right? So, 
You allow a man to insert himself in between you and that relationship. You won't have any understanding because your basis or your foundation of what's right and wrong is you come into it wrong. Like your celebrations, all these things that make you feel good emotionally, they they have no standing in law. Like you can't tell somebody they got to go to jail because you make them feel the way. You can't say you can't say that about homosexuals because they feel a way about that. If they can't press a charge and say I caused some blood to come out of them, I damaged their property, I stole something from them, it's made up. It's that's a feministic. It's that's the society that you live in. If you examine the book of Isaiah, um, the third what is the third book? Third book of Isaiah. It's speaking about the society that we live in now. And I say that the word of God, the word of our creator, is the order of what we talk about Isaiah not. But when you read these books, it's supposed to be storylines that support keeping the order. Or it, it goes towards telling you how this happened, how that happened. And in Isaiah 3, they paint a picture or a time where the society was feminine. And they spoke about women in a bunch of different ways. Y'all should check that out. We live in that, in that right now, and it's not a prophetic thing. It's just more so we will repeat it. Um, Ecclesiastes 1, 9, it's nothing new under the sun. The only thing that happened is that to happen before. The only thing is when it happened the first time, it was so long ago that you didn't witness it. So what's a new phenomenon to you? And it's not. Um, in, the, in that, it says that the sun... The sun will glide somewhere and then the sun will return back to the place that it came from. Plain, plain English that the sun moves and the earth is, is fastened. For whatever reason, mankind needs you to believe in the other way to which um, there's no money involved that the earth is flat. But it's plenty if you NASA and saying that you're up in the space and doing all this research. It creates revenue for something that... People that follow the word of creator is not concerned with why are you up there? It's, what, what are you going to do? What's your agenda for going up there? Look. You can. Any Olympics. Competition. Um, track and field swimming. These two things men can do without any assist from any machine, right? The water and the land. And for the most part, a skilled track runner, a um, skilled swimmer can swim pretty fast, break some records, and their, their oxygen, their breath would be pretty good, right? You, you would think that. I would think that. But you couldn't do the same thing in the air without some kind of perversion or some kind of contraption. It's just beyond your scope to just levitate, fly, flap your wings fast enough to... to so we pervert it and we take flight. And we think of it as a breakthrough. Y'all think we supposed to be up there just in regular talk. Not nothing crazy. Just in y'all think we suppose we can't do it without the assistance of a machine. We can go in that water, no machine needed. We can we can on the land, no no machine needed. Now, in the water and on the land, we use a machine to travel faster, right? But that's not, we don't need the machine to travel by either one of those. The distances by water that we can travel, of course, is not as much as in a machine, but we not asked out. You can throw you in the water and you, you probably won't die. Uh, we can throw you on the dirt, you're definitely not going to die, you know, but... If we throw you up in the air from high enough up, you definitely going to die. There's nothing you can do. We don't think of it as a perversion because it's a breakthrough. That's what you say. How would that go across our creative? 
he didn't make us with with means of, you know, we can adapt to the water. Oh, yeah, we can swim, doggy paddle, hold on. You you can adapt to the air. You can't do it without some kind of external assistance. If it's not in you to do, like, you, you're you not supposed to pervert it. That, not that kind of thing. And there can be breakthroughs that help enhance, you know, um, flight is for money. Um, it's, it's for money. The people that have airplanes or whatever, they're not there because they give a shit about people. They're there to make money. And us as the dumbass public, we see the convenience in flying. And we give up all kinds of rationale and reason that airplanes are safer than cars. Yeah, it's not the same amount of planes in the air as it is cars on the ground. Put the same amount up there. See what happens. Smash, boom, bash. All kinds of word trickery, chants, spells, and these things been pulling us in forever, you know, forever. So, the straw man situation is based on this, you know, what you believe, what you don't correct. And it's about you having the right to say who you are. When you hear the create I am that I am, that's saying I exist that, so I exist. I don't exist for you to exist, and you don't exist for me to exist. I'm, I'm governed by God, the do's and the don'ts. I'm not governed by Moses part in the Red Sea. That's not criteria for, for being righteous. I'm not going to part the Red Sea or be fake running from some Egyptian pharaoh. And I used to believe that shit. When I could separate those stories and didn't have to worry about them, like, well, are you doing the, the, the order of the, of the book? Of not even the book, two stone tablets. Never to be changed. And if something get added to it, it should look like stone, right? They added paper to stone. You can identify it. The narrative of the script, the narrative of the story is etched in the finger, etched in the two stone tablets with the finger of God. That's the narrative that it gave, written in stone. Written in stone. It wasn't a hadith, it wasn't a Quran, it wasn't a New Testament. Etched in stone. It was just the order of the creator. The stories happened over a period of time, that phenomenon, but the order was the whole thing that made that nation who they were. The monotheism. Like, they didn't do what everybody else did. So when you got colonized under Christianity or the Romans, they inserted their behavior. And their behavior wasn't based on the word of the creator. So historically, they'll tell you that the Jews were fighting... Um, the Romans, but the Jews play a big part in this as well. I'm going to the Sam RNL channel too, y'all. I'm going to hold up as long as I can hold up. Feel like my eyes getting heavy, but uh, Sam RNL and this guy went to rabbinical school, um, Jewish prehistory. That's what I'm looking at. Uh, Jewish priest on Israel and Judah forged in iron. Gods of Israel. Uh, let's go, y'all. Let's do it. They not that long. So let's get some. It all goes in explaining what I'm, what what I'm trying to let y'all know. Like the government is 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 really complicatingly simple. Just know that you're not a Christian, you're not from Africa, and stop pursuing that. And I don't want to sound mystic or anything like that, but the information will find you. Like if. You you pure heartedly wanna wanna know like if you pure heartedly wanna know the information will find y'all you know what I'm saying just like me I, I was the Hebrew Israelite thing at first and but I wasn't trying to be a Hebrew Israelite I just thought that that's where and they had a lot of stuff that was factual that was good and it brought me out of the darkness so shout out to them shout out to them for what they did but um what's up little rubber Brennan just into the chat. But um, I still was growing. I still wanted the truth because I was wrestling with the stomach cancer. I, I wasn't trying to be popular. What's up, little bro? Cheers. I just finished one off. I'm about to sign off shortly. I've been on here for a little bit. But as always, I appreciate you coming through. It's my little brother, Brennan, in the building. And he a young fella and always come through fine time. I to hang out with his old ass big bro. Appreciate you. I'm going to get some good old grub, my man. I think I want to eat something too, little bro. Feeling kind of hungry. 
and um, I, with stomach issues or so, I got to eat when the eating is good or when I'm feeling up to it. Yeah, shout out to you. Shout out to all the brothers that come through every day too, man. I appreciate y'all as always. You know what I mean? But um, 